Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Hey guys, Amber here from a Meeple family, and today we're gonna check out a really fun game called Subway Squeeze. This game plays two to four players in about 30 minutes, and the recommended age is 12 and up. Let's take a look at how to set up Subway Squeeze. Now, depending on how many players you have playing your game of Subway Squeeze will determine what side of the board you use. There are icons on both sides of the board to dictate whether it is a two or four player game or a three player game. For our game, example today, we'll go ahead and set up a three player game. In the game, this board is referred to as the platform. So go ahead and lay out your platform so that it's in reach of all players. The game also comes with queue dividers, which you'll use to line up to the platform so we can make queues for our passengers. Go ahead and return any additional queue lines to the box. Now we're going to need to separate some of the tiles. We need to pull out all the single passenger tiles as well as the lost luggage tiles. We're also going to place the stop marker on the first stop on the track. Now we will randomly select passenger pieces. We're going to need to place nine within each of our three queues. Any passengers not used in these queues can be put back into the box. As this game accommodates four players and we're only setting up a three player game, I'll go ahead and put one of the boards back into the box. Now each of these boards is double sided. There is a nighttime side which is slightly more advanced and a daytime side. For our example today, we'll just be playing with the daytime side. Go ahead and decide which player is going to go first and they can start with the conductor chip. Each round of the game is split into four parts. The conductor will start each round, including the first one, by moving the stop marker to the next stop. Next up, it's time to fill our platform with passengers. Whoever is holding the conductor token will now pick any piece they wish from each corresponding section of the platform. Just keep in mind, if you're the conductor, you're gonna be the last person who picks a piece from the platform. This is going to ensure a nice array of passengers to choose from. Once the conductor has chosen a passenger from each corresponding queue line and placed them on the platform, they can simply return the conductor hat to the icon located on the platform board. The next step of gameplay is to pick a passenger piece. The player to the the left of the conductor will start and choose any piece they would like from the platform. Play will continue like this and the conductor will get the last passenger that's left on the platform. Now whoever takes the piece that is associated with the conductor chip must take the conductor chip as well and they're going to be the conductor for the next round. Lastly, it's time to place your piece into your carriage. The rounds will continue just like this until the train has finally reached the last stop. At that point, we'll finish the current round, discard any leftover pieces in the queue, and count up our final scores. Now before we go any further, let's take a closer look at how this subway carriage is laid out and some placement rules we need to follow when putting passengers into our subway carriage. These white squares here are door spaces, and these four black spaces are barriers. The purple spaces are seating options. Now you can use the grid as a guide and you can place your piece anywhere in your carriage, but you have to obey a few rules. Pieces cannot overlap each other. Also, the whole piece must be in the carriage and you can't place pieces over those barrier squares. Although you can place passengers in seating or doorways. You're also able to flip and rotate your piece to any orientation that's gonna get you the most points. Let's go over how these different passengers score. If you place a piece that has a ticket inspector on it, you must immediately take a single passenger piece from the pile and place it anywhere in your carriage, following normal placement rules. If at any time you you have to take a piece and it doesn't fit into your carriage, you must discard it, placing it back into the passenger box and immediately take a lost property piece from the pile and place it in your carriage instead. Gameplay is going to continue just like this until the train reaches the last stop. At that point, we'll finish the round and discard the leftover pieces in the queue. So now that we understand some of those placement rules, let's go ahead and look over how some of these passengers score. At the bottom of your player board, you will be able to see reminders of these throughout the game. First up, let's talk about a family. Families score points based on how many passengers are in each group. So for my example here, I have a family of three. 
and I can see that that awards me three points. When scoring like passengers or collections and groups, sides of the passengers need to be touching, so I wouldn't be able to place this here and count it as a family unit of three. But as long as their sides are touching, that will count. Now let's take a look at dogs. Dogs get lonely when separated from their family, so they need to be touching a family in order to score. And if they are, like in this example, dogs will be worth two points. If a dog is not by a family like this, then they'll be worth zero. Now let's take a look at the business commuter. Commuters are in a hurry and they like to make a quick exit out of the door. So if their group touches a door space, they're going to score more points. So in this example, they'll score one point. But if I'm able to have my group of commuters attached to a door space like this, then each passenger is now worth two points instead of one. Tourists simply need to be in a group of three to score. Groups of three tourists will get you four points. Next up are buskers. They love an audience. They score one point per passenger that touches them. Just remember, passengers only count as touching them on their sides, not the corners. So buskers can only score you a max of four points. Now let's take a look at pregnant women. Pregnant women should be given a seat, and they score three points if they're in a seat. And remember, these are the purple spaces on our subway carriage. If you're not able to seat your pregnant women, then they're going to be worth zero. Now, any gaps you have at the end of the game are going to be negative points based on the numerical value that is showing. So for this example, I would have negative five points. When it comes time to score, you can use the included score pad that comes with the game. Adding up all of your different collections of passengers, minusing those empty spaces, and determine who was able to Subway Squeeze the best. And that's a quick overview of how to play Subway Squeeze by Professor Puzzle Games. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes 